joined by the host of RT's Kaiser Report, Max Kaiser. Max, good evening. Thanks for coming on. Um, we were hearing there that China looks set then to challenge the petrodollar. Why does Beijing feel the need uh, to do this? Well, first of all, they're very brave to do this because countries that have tried to exit the oil dollar matrix have met terrible ends. Of course, Saddam Hussein wanted to trade oil in euros, so he was killed. Uh, you had uh, Muammar Gaddafi wanted to trade his energy in something other than U.S. dollars. He was killed. So the track record here is pretty dire. So kudos to China for, for taking this project on. And of course, they are rumored to be the big buyer in the Aramco offering of their state oil facilities coming down the pike. So. This makes sense in a geopolitical sense in terms of you've got China and uh, Russia and the Saudis are looking to escape the U.S. dollar, U.S. dollar hegemony. Uh, they're looking to de-dollarize. That's a concept we see all over the world right now as countries want to escape from the U.S. military industrial complex, these countries around the world are tired of funding America's military adventurism by being a party to the empire of debt, as it's known around the world, uh, the U.S. dollar, and they want to split off. They want their autonomy. You know, China wants autonomy. Russia wants autonomy. Uh, Iran wants autonomy. They, want, they don't want to be ruled over by the U.S. dollar anymore. So this gives them away, this, this, this contract, futures contract based uh, in yuan, uh, for oil, convertible into gold, means that these countries can finally, and it's been in place since the end of World War II, escape the Bretton Woods U.S. dollar hegemony, empire of date, supremacy, world reserve currency, that is the U.S. dollar, and we're in a new, a new beginning, I think. Uh, is there anything then that the U.S. can do about this? Because it's not going to be happy that it's going to lose the petrodollar, so how would you expect it to fight back? Well, they're exactly right. They will fight back. They will start a war. You know, maybe they'll start a war uh, between Japan and China. You know, maybe they'll start a war with North Korea. You know, America will do anything to keep the U.S. dollar as world reserve currency. Uh, they will invade a country like Afghanistan. Uh, they, they, they'll stop at nothing because this is the basis of the U.S. empire. It's not land-based. It's not based on material goods. It's based on rent-seeking. It's based on lending dollars, getting that income, and then when countries can't pay, they dismantle the assets and take them over. We saw in Latin America, South America. This is how America built its empire. The countries that are resistant to America's financial cartel are Russia, China, Iran. So now they figured out, you know what, we're going to split off from the dollar and they can do so with this new contract. And they're also, they're embracing cryptocurrencies. Cryptocurrencies in this context is another way to de-dollarize, to de-dollarize, get out of the U.S. dollar. The U.S. dollar is being held up w narrowly with uh, the Pentagon's various actions around the world and a lot of market machinations from the central banks. But once the, the cat's out of the bag, you know, look for the dollar to uh, have a very significant crash. Mm. Uh, and among the, among the countries you said might actually join China in this were um, Saudi Arabia. You said that just a couple of minutes ago. I mean, that might surprise a lot of people that they would be willing to go ahead with this. Oh, yeah. So, no, uh, absolutely. Uh, so Saudi how, Arabia. how could they be able to do, to do this and, and simply switch out of the U.S. dollar? Do you think it's that simple for them? Well, it's not going to be simple, but there, there is definitely a motivation for the Saudis to, um, you know, they're very, they want to float Aramco, for example, because they need the money, because they're deeply in debt, and, and they're running out of cash, and they wanted to do an IPO of Aramco uh, on the either the London or the American exchange, but they were prevented from doing so from the legal actions of the 9-11 survivors who rightly point to the Saudis as the cause of 9-11, the architects of 9-11, and they uh, were allowed in America for those lawsuits to go forward. That's a pretty recent development, only in the last year or so. Lawsuits against Saudis for terrorism for 9-11 have been allowed to go forward. So now the Saudis are like, okay, if that's the way you feel, America, then we're going to take our business to China, Russia, Iran, you know. So there's a huge split between the Saudi and America right now. The petrodollar, which got started in 1970, 1971, that's coming to an end. 
Uh, the Saudis are doing all kinds of moves that beyond just killing people on 9-11, okay. which is pretty aggressive, I think. Uh, Max, they're doing really a lot of other moves. We could talk too. a lot longer about this. It's a fascinating topic, but we've got to leave it there. Really appreciate your thoughts on this. That was uh, sure. Max Kaiser. Thank you.